all right so today what you're going to do what we're going to do is okay fine so let's talk about some of the experiments that we're going to do one of those basically include finding the speed of sound using stationary waves okay, okay. now from this the first experiment is basically using a water column in a tube so for that um, we got to have I want you to basically wait on drawing this and let me finish it before you start drawing this. Juveri and Aisha, how are you? I'm good too. So basically what you do is you uh, fill this with some water like that and then you have these tongs they have known frequency if you go to a doctor right doctor like a hearing doctor they generally have these tongs that check your hearing they have certain frequencies. They hit it with something and then they vibrate. Like that. So, what they do is, initially, when they hit it, they move the column and at a certain length, let's say L1, they create a stationary wave where a node is always created at the closed end and there's an anti-node here so they hear a loud sound because the anti-node is formed and then they adjust the column they adjust it in a way where now they will have another length L2 and this time they're gonna hear the next loud sound of this so there's a node here there's another node here and then there's an anti node when they hear the next loud sound they know that okay now by moving this this much you have found the next or the the subsequent anti node all right so i'm going to write it down so it's more clearer that way so what you want to do is you want to adjust the length l1 till you hear a loud sound so this is the first step you're going to do then move the tube up or down till you hear another loud sound and note L2 
abstract let's write length l2 what you're going to do next is you subtract l2 from l1 and this will give you the difference between two adjacent antinodes. All right. Now we can use L2 minus L1, which is equal to half lambda. And from here, we can find lambda to be basically two times the change in length, whatever we got from subtracting them. And finally, use V is equal to F lambda to find speed of sound where f is the frequency of the tong which we use right there are known frequencies these tongs okay so i hope you guys understand this if you have any questions do let me know about this please Okay. All right, so now let's talk about the next thing. You guys have written it, any questions? Should I move forward? Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is basically another method of finding speed of sound. You can also use this for light but then it's all right this is called using a cathode ray oscilloscope so we have done the cathode ray oscilloscope already and a reflector So that's done. This is pretty easy actually. So what happens is that suppose that we have a reflector right here. And then because of um, a signal generator or something like that, we have managed to create a stationary wave like that okay now this stationary wave is created by of course a loudspeaker connected to a signal generator of 
known frequency. Okay. Okay, now now we know that basically this section, although we can't see this, but we know an antinode will be here, a node will be here, and then an antinode, and then a node, and then an antinode node, anti-node, node and anti-node, like that, right? So what we do is, we take a microphone and then we connect this to a CRO Let's make it a bit nicer And um, so this is our mic. And then what you do is you got to move the mic. Like suppose when you move the mic here, at this particular point, you, you're going to basically see maximum amplitude. Because we know that at an antenna there will be maximum amplitude. So on the screen you will it will be displayed like this now so as you move from this point to the next anti node you again will witness another maximum amplitude so what you can do is you can find this length this length actually and if you manage to find this length by moving the microphone and checking where first maximum and the next maximum comes you will be able to find the length between anti-node to anti-node, right? So we're going to write this down now. So as we move the microphone along a line, the CRO detects zero amplitude at nodes and maximum amplitude at anti-nodes. So what you're going to do, you're going to measure the distance else between two adjacent antinodes or nodes. It, it's up to you whether you want to you know, do it between uh, zero amplitude and zero or max or max. That's up to you completely. Now, the length L between two adjacent nodes or anti-nodes will be equal to half lambda because we already know this. Now again, lambda will be equal to 2L and then finally, you can use V is equal to F lambda to find speed of speed of sound where f is the frequency 
of signal generator so like that if you have any questions please let me know anything you like to know welcome Ahmad, Aisha, Javeria, Aman, Late. You guys understand this? Yes. Okay, good. So it's pretty simple. If you just you know follow along what I've written, that would be good. Now, the only thing that I want you to tell you, I want you to understand is that write a note here. So both ways, the same method can be used for EM waves, but what you do is we use a probe and a particular EM wave, for example, microwave instead. This helps us find speed of light. That's how it works, right? So all you need is a probe which can detect EM wave and that's it. You can attempt the same method there as well. So that's pretty cool. That sense then. Okay. Now. Now there is another method. The last one actually. And the last method basically it's called. Okay, well, to have to do this. All right, give me like one minute. I need to get some water, please. Okay. All right. I'll be back. So then we have Kunz Dust Experiment. And uh, this experiment basically is like there's a tube a 
okay something like that there is one side has basically a speaker connected to a signal generator signal generator is used to create wave of same i mean known frequency that's why we do that So within this tube, there are like dust particles already. But when a stationary wave is created, inside this tube, like that. So where the nodes are, like here we have a node, exactly here we have a node and then we have a node here because nodes do not have any energy so what really happens is that the dust that is inside basically forms heaps like this okay so these are basically dust heaps Usually we uh, use uh, boric powder for this. It's the same powder that you use for, you know, sliding things off in main, many board games or something like that. So you guys need to remember that. Just hold on a second. You can draw this. I'm, I'm back. So now, when a signal generator forms a stationary wave, anti nodes displaces the dust and uh, beneath the nodes it forms heaps of dust and that's how we can identify where the nodes are all right you can just add this that this is because as nodes have no energy to displace that's why and then what you can do is you can measure the length between node to node so we can say all right measure length l between two adjacent nodes and then we can use v equals to f lambda where L is equal to half lambda, it is node to node distance, and therefore lambda is 2L, right? And F is the
frequency of signal generator to find speed of sound right is it clear everyone any questions now when you go on YouTube today whenever you have time so on YouTube just search uh, stationary waves on fire so you can basically look at that and you will like that video please do if you have time all right so um yeah Aman Aisha Javeria Haman. Is it clear? Any questions? No? All right. Now, we got. I hope you guys have written this. So the next thing you want to do is basically I just want to show you how vibrations of longitudinal and transverse station waves differ from each other. So add the heading vibrations of longitudinal in 10 minutes please rejoin if we don't finish. and. transverse stationary waves so um, this is very important to understand that when a stationary wave forms basically the drawing is the same that we've been doing but the main difference would be like in a longitude in the transverse wave the vibrations get smaller near the node and it is largest at the anti node and so on like that and so on right so this would be our um, transverse for longitudinal one so I'll just copy this first so it's easier that way Okay. For a longitudinal one, basically the vibrations are directed like towards the anti nodes. Sorry, nodes. My bad. So from the middle, they just split towards nodes, and that's the reason that the node is highly, you know, the forces cancel out like that. So this is basically the way longitudinal waves form, alright? If you have any questions, let me know. Now I just want to tell you, and that's very important, that write a note here. Nodes are always formed at closed end and anti nodes at open. So, this is very important, you should remember this. So, if you see a closed end, 
like we have uh, seen it before as well so you just write down then i'll move up so you'll find that too all right now so like this for example node at closed end as you can see node at closed end as you can see node at closed end as you can see so you always always take nodes at the closed end ahmad is a cliff yes good now So, I just want to tell you the last thing, and that is basically the phase difference, okay? And then we'll be done with this chapter. I'm going to give you a worksheet for this, and you got to complete it by tomorrow, so we can check it. So. Okay. So suppose we have uh, we have a dotted line and its solid line showing the stationary wave like that so on the solid line we have certain points like a b c maybe let's write c here b e f suppose and the other one is like S T W X Y Z suppose like that so what what you need to understand is that all points on solid line that you see have a phase difference of zero degrees with each other so with each other basically means that the points like if they say a b c d e and f they are all zero degrees to each other and all points on dotted line have a phase difference of one uh, sorry zero degrees with each other which basically means that these points which you see as s t w x y and z they're all zero degrees to each other but however a b c d e and f and s t w any points on this right on the other lines they will have 180 degree phase difference with each other so if you compare any points on the same line they are going to have zero degrees phase difference and if you compare on the like opposite line which is dotted 
they will have 180 degree phase difference there is no other phase in this only these two all right i hope that's clear all right if you have any questions let me know we we'll finish with this worksheet i uh, i mean the topic and then from uh, tomorrow after i check your work we'll move towards 